Hey, what's going on, guys? This is the Short Sports Show. I'm your host, Daniel Short. Today is Friday, November. Oh, almost said October again. November 8th, 2013. And uh, this might be a shorter episode than usual. Uh, I get it, short, short sports show. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it might be a shorter episode today because today is my dad's birthday. So happy birthday to my dad. And I will spe- uh, be spending the day and weekend with him. So this might be shorter than 30 minutes. Uh, if it's still 30 minutes, that's awesome. That's great. If not, please understand. Uh, but what I will be talking about today, along with other stuff, but this is just the, just the real you in right here. Does Stanford jump Florida State in the BCS rankings because of uh, Oregon or because of beating Oregon uh, last night in a crazy game? Also, I still do not like Baylor. I still don't like them. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more and also what to watch for this week in the NFL and in college football. So stay tuned to that. We'll go ahead and jump into the college football. Go ahead and uh, I can't talk. Talk about some uh, quick notes, what's going on around the country, and all, and then we'll hit with uh, what to watch for and also recapping uh, last night's games with Baylor and Oklahoma and Stanford and Oregon. So uh, on Tuesday, Texas Longhorns hired their new athletic director, Steve Patterson from Arizona State, and they said, quote, we hit a home run. I, I see it more as uh, more like a strikeout looking. This was because the reason I say that is because you know there's two guys they wanted to get really really badly really really badly and would have put up the money for it that's Oliver Luck who's the the number one guy who was at West Virginia and also uh, I can't think of his name right now but the guy at Ohio State the athletic di- director for o- Ohio State they wanted hit, both of them well one of them but you know those were the two main guys and the reason they got this guy is because apparently this guy doesn't have the greatest track record, so it's not like they picked a like when they said they got a home run. I don't know about that. This guy really hasn't accomplished anything other than getting a degree at Texas. So it looks like they went for the homer because they couldn't pull anything in. So saying you hit a quote home run, I I don't I don't see how that's anywhere close. And that's not because I hate Texas. It's I'm not being biased towards that. I'm I'm being completely how I feel and what I think and I think they just they screwed up there and uh, it was funny that we asked they asked them Thursday on this press conference yesterday um, you know what are you going to do about Mac Brown now obviously that's going to be the major question leading into the offseason whether Texas makes a bowl game or doesn't and crashes on the way down that is going to be the question on whether you know that that's the main thing that's the whole reason everything's going on at Texas right now And, uh, you know, he says, I've only been here for 15 minutes and and smiles. And that's it. Doesn't say anything else. Doesn't say, oh, we'll talk about it later. But uh, it it is funny seeing how he's going to have to address that. And depending on how Texas does, whether they make it to a bowl game and possibly win it or they just crash on the way down and not get that six win. Because I don't think they have six win. I think they're like five and two or something like that, which is, (sighs) which sucks. Anyways, uh, Jameis Squinston. Yes, I know what I said. Squinston. Florida State quarterback squints a lot during games. If you watched over all of his games, <laughs> uh, he squints a lot. And that is because uh, in his day-to-day, day-to-day life, he wears contacts. You know, that's, you know, either, you know, that's what I guess people do. That, anyways, God, that was dumb. <laughs> um, but he doesn't wear them playing football, which... I can understand just a little bit. Uh, me, I, I wear glasses. I wish I had contacts, but um, I can see how that gets in a way uh, when you're playing sports. Now, apparently, he does wear contacts when he's playing baseball for Florida State, um, which is kind of a risk in itself. He does play outfield, so you're not really have to worry about the, the dirt so much, as, you know, as in the ground dirt. You know, uh, first to second, second to third, stuff like that. Don't have to deal with that too much. Um, and there's less contact um, in baseball than there is football. That's a given. And I could see why he wears it in there because that's uh, it. Just it's n- there's nothing too bad about that. But when you're wearing football, knowing um, no matter what position you play, other than probably kicker, um, you're gonna get hit, especially at quarterback position. So and that can mess up your contacts. Contact could fall out. Could be messed up. Then you got to you know move it around. 
it's got to sanitize it, all that other stuff. So I can see why it doesn't wear. But the thing I have a concern with, and this is, shouldn't be a huge story, but the thing I have a concern with is that if he's squinting a whole lot just to see this, his sideline to give to get the plays in, um, you know, that concerns me just a bit. Now, I'm not going to go back on the game where uh, at, when he played Miami last week and he threw two interceptions. I'm not going to say, oh, well, if he had contacts on or if he had some type of, you know, glasses like goggles or something that uh, like Eric Dickerson used to wear where he had those big goggles. Now, they may not have been eye prescription type goggle things, but it, I'm sure there's something like that out there that he could wear. Now, you may not look the greatest on the video you might look a little weird but if that's if that's protecting yourself and that's um you know helping you see better then who really cares you know the people that care about the more if they care more about the way you look than the way you're actually playing then there's obviously something wrong with them or they're you know yeah so anyways um and i've missed the point of what i was trying to say i went on with the eric dickerson thing which i had written down and, and now I can't think of what I was just saying. Uh, either way, I don't think it's a huge... Uh, I, I think it is a small thing that he needs to wear some type of protection for his eyes to see better. Um, but I'm not going to go blame it on the game where he threw just two interceptions and, and say that was his eyesight, which some people are already doing. I think that's a little dumb because, I mean, you're able to still see them. You're just not seeing them. HD perfect clear vision stuff like that but that was just something out there and last week or, or Monday I talked about Florida State losing an offensive tackle well the news just keeps getting worse for them they lost another offensive lineman for the year another offensive tackle Tyler Moore suffered a compound fracture on his right elbow uh, in a scooter accident and will be out for the remainder of the year that's another huge loss for Florida. It just seems like if you're an offensive lineman, you might as well just quit the football team because you're about to break something in your bone, and it's just gonna be all bad from there. So, Florida State or Florida, excuse me, Florida Gators are having a bad year with offensive linemen. Um, also, LSU signed a quarterback, Brandon Harris, in recruiting high school uh, on a financial aid agreement. Uh, this is one of the first recruits to use this new rule that came out last month that we talked about. Uh, basically, it allows early enrolling players uh, to secure scholarships months ahead uh, before the National Signing Day where most recruits, you know, sign. It's, it's awesome to watch on ESPN. If you haven't seen it, make sure you go watch it. Come, e, I think it's February 6th. I think it's, usually it's, it's around that. So if you look for it on there on ESPN, all day event, they go across the country at different high schools, and, and you'll see you know players just saying where they want to go. They'll do a little trickery. They'll have their family uh, switch T-shirts or something like that. I don't know. It's always really cool uh, to see what they do, and I love watching that. Um, let's see. Also, Brandon Harris is a is ranked third best dual threat quarterback in the nation of the class of twenty. 14 now we'll go ahead those, those are basically what happened in college football this week we'll go ahead and talk about what to watch for this week and also uh recapping last night's games now last night oregon and stanford played now for most people they may have seen this maybe as a real high scoring game maybe they saw oregon around 30 points now earlier this week i i, I can't remember which player I, I don't I want to say the Anthony Thomas but that that could be a lie and I don't want to lie um, a player came out and said we should we as in Oregon should drop 40 points at least 40 points on Stanford well they were shut out Oregon was shut out the first three quarters and part of like half of the fourth quarter um, Stanford basically just just did everything they needed to um, in this game they just dominated from point a to point b stanford really deserved this win and for the second straight year stanford drops oregon uh for their first loss of the year now this brings up the or first i want to say oregon leads or is six in the country with 301 uh rushing yards uh per game that's that's how much you know they uh, rush, get the yardage. Oh my God! And they were held to 62 rushing yards by Stanford. 
62 rushing yards. For a team that averages per game 300 yards on the ground, they only get 62. That's incredible. I I would have bet my life they would have rushed for more than at least 120 yards. If if you asked me before the game, I would have been, oh, definitely. I, I know Stanford's defense is very good. I, I, I know that, but I would have never thought they would help held them that low especially in points to 20 points to Oregon that is incredible what Stanford does and now it brings up the argument of where does Stanford need to be placed um, and I want to get to the BCS standings real quick um, I guess I'll go ahead and do it now uh, if ESPN would be very kind in letting me do this um, so right now obviously Alabama's going to stay at number one even though they are playing LSU this week I am going ahead and say LSU wins the game uh, 17-14 final score. They get a field goal late in the game or Alabama misses one. Either way, LSU gets the victory, so that'll do something. But we'll talk about what's happening right now if, if, if Alabama were to win. You have Florida State at number two. Oregon will drop from three. They they probably still stay in the, they have to stay in the top ten just because of the, the love that they get. So you can probably see them around six, seven or so. Um, but Stanford will most definitely jump Ohio State. I mean, there's no way, especially with Ohio State having a bye week this week. Stanford jumps Ohio State to take the number three spot. Now, Alabama, Florida State, both undefeated. Stanford with one loss. But Stanford has been playing tougher teams than Florida State has. Especially beating Oregon, a number three team. Now, I know you could say Florida State played Miami last week. They're number seven in the nation. Now, uh, Miami's uh, 11th. Yeah, but Miami's not that good. And, and the computer rankings, they know they're not that good. They have them very, very low. They have them at, uh, they're right now they're at, at 11. But all the rankings have them at 12, 13, 15, 11, 10, 12. And one has them on eight. But basically, they they think they're a top fifth. They're around that low fifteen area. So it makes you think. Well, Stanford, you know, I don't know. I don't think they jump them this week. But it is a very good uh, thing to watch to see if if the points, because you know they go by points. If they get close enough to Florida State, where Florida State makes one mistake, mistake. Especially if they keep that game close against Wake Forest, who they play this week, they keep that close. You're gonna see Stanford jump Florida State Sunday night when the BCS rankings are revealed. Guarantee it. Also, Baylor beating Oklahoma 41 to 12. And if you saw on my Facebook page, it was about the first quarter, maybe second quarter. Uh, the game was five to three or something like that, or ten to three. Um, and I was like, well bandwagoners jump off for Baylor and and all this other stuff and obviously that's why you don't talk too soon um Baylor goes ahead and wins the game 41 to 12 and o just dominated Oklahoma from point A to point B just uh, offensively defensively did everything and just just knocked them out um now the reason I say I don't still like Baylor yet is one thing I want to get clear I'm not jealous of Baylor. As a TCU fan, you know, they, there's a little rivalry right there. Um, I'm, I'm not jealous of Baylor. Now, I know the offensive woes that TCU has been having all year. You know, people could say, oh, I'm jealous of them because they're scoring a whole lot of points and we barely can score, you know, any points in the first half of games. You know, that's, it's not a jealousy. It's more just, I just don't like them. But, as having a radio show, you, you can't be biased. So, yes, I'm going to give Baylor some credit. But this is the toughest team o Baylor has played, which is Oklahoma. Before this, it was either K-State or West Virginia. You pick who's tougher. That was the toughest team they have played all year. That is why this game I thought was going to be very low scoring. And I, I was pretty sure uh, Oklahoma would win this game. Now that Baylor proved something by beating Oklahoma 41-12, yes, they did. They proved that they can play with some tough teams, and they can score a whole lot of points, and they can hold you to very low amount of points. Uh, Baylor's remaining schedule uh, is not that tough, I don't believe. Oh, next week they have uh, Texas Tech, and then they're on the road at Oklahoma State, at TCU, and then home against Texas. Um, 
in a Texas Tech game, that's going to be a shootout game. Uh, I, don't, I, I think the offense, you know, obviously the offenses for Oklahoma and Texas Tech are completely different. You know, one's a very pro style offense. One's, you know, obviously the air raid offense. We're going to have to see how Oklahoma, uh, or excuse me, how Baylor defends that. Uh, they did very good against Oklahoma. Let's see what they do against Texas Tech. But now they're hitting that tough stretch. They had those easy games at first, and now we'll get, I don't know. I just, I'll give a little bit of credit to Baylor. They'll probably, they're, they're going to be number five for sure in the nation. I don't think they jump Ohio State at all. Um, just because of uh, the, even though, well, they haven't played anybody either, but they, I just don't see them jumping it. Not because I don't like Baylor, it's because of the way the rankings are set up. Uh, Baylor just can't pass um, Ohio State. So, very interesting what college football is going to have to offer us this week and how everything will go. Now we'll trans- transition over to the NFL. And uh, real quick, just want to give a quick shout out to NFL News 24 7. Uh, it's a great page on Facebook. I get a lot of my news and other stuff, and, and it brings up a. They have a lot of things they talk about that makes me think, and I'm like, oh, hey, I can use this for my show. This is a pretty good topic to talk about. Um, they update often throughout the day and uh, throughout the week. And also, thanks to Corey Hall for running the page and also for uh, talking to me uh, and having something for their page uh, for myself, you know. Uh, so thank you guys for that. And it's a very good page. Go go check it out if you have a Facebook account, and which I think everybody has one. Um, but it's a very good page. And again, thank you guys for what y'all did for me. So we'll go ahead and talk about uh, some NFL news, quick hits before we talk about the what to watch for, and also uh, recapping last night's game with the Minnesota Vikings and the Washington Redskins. Green Bay Packers are working out Matt Flynn. Yes, the man they let go in free agency and, uh, you know, signs that huge deal with Seattle. <laughs> then they, I, I still can't remember if they traded him or released him to the Oakland Raiders. Raiders pick him up. Terrell Pryor becomes good. And now, boom, back in the same boat. And now it, it, it comes full circle. You basically just put his, if you named his career, it'd be full circle because of how one, two good games that he had with the Packers when Aaron Rodgers was out. And it comes all the back around, thinks he's going to start his career, and bam, <laughs> someone else takes his job. And uh, with, uh, uh, wow, I put A Rod on here to, just to make it short, and I was about to say Alex Rodriguez. Aaron Rodgers uh, is going to be out four to six weeks with that collarbone injury. Um, so most likely we'll see him because the other quarterbacks for, uh, the Green Bay Packers are Seneca Wallace, who, who will start. So Matt Flynn looks like a pretty solid option, uh, for that. So when I was writing things down for, there's three players that are coming back, uh, two, three different teams. And it was just funny how I wrote, I don't know. It's a quick little thing. You you would have to see it, but anyways, 49ers, Aldon Smith. Packers linebacker Clay Matthews and Bears quarterback Jay Cutler all expected to play this week, uh, returning after missing a few games, uh, <laughs> most more than others, but uh, they will all be back to play against the teams, whoever they're playing. Uh, Bears are playing the Lions, Packers, okay, yeah, I tried. Uh, Jets running back Mike Goodson indicted indicted uh that always that word always gets to me um thursday on weapons charges from may uh, from a may 17th arrest could face maximum of 10 years in prison his attorney says um goodson's uh that they were not goodson's guns and stuff like that defending him uh, i didn't read too much about it because um he's not that good of a player so that was just some quick news also broncos head coach john fox is doing very good in high spirits. Uh, after Jack Del Rio talked to him for about 20 minutes and and talked to ESPN about it, and says that he's doing really good, which is good to hear. Um, also, I think Gary Kubiak is expected to return uh, November 17th, which is uh, two weeks from now. Or, yeah, two weeks from now. So that's good for him to come back. Make glad he, Everything is okay with him. So last night, Minnesota Vikings and the Washington Redskins went at it with, um, to me, a shocker. 
Uh, Minnesota gets the victory 34 to 27. RG3, 281 yards passing and also, uh, oh man, Alfred Morris. Is that the right name? Jeez, I can't, I forget his first name sometimes. I'm sorry. 139 yards on the ground and Pierre Garçon had 119 yards receiving. Uh, this week, what to watch for it? Very good games this week. Uh, now, this is probably going to be a depressing week uh, for football for me. <laughs> TCU is going at Iowa State. Then it would never been there. Our team sucks this year, so <sighs> I don't see a win out of that. And then also, my San Diego Chargers are playing, I still believe, the toughest team in the NFL, and that's the Denver Broncos. Thankfully, Chargers do have them at home. Sad news, sad news is uh, Paint Man is, is, is expected to be there. So I see a 35 to 17 win or loss for the Chargers. I, I just don't see the Chargers pulling out this victory. Now, do I think we'll score maybe more than 17 points? I, I think we can. I, I, I feel good about our offense. I feel like we could do some things Denver's not going to expect. But defensively we have one of the worst secondaries in the league if not the worst and when you have Peyton Manning on the other side who is apparently a god of football and just could read every single play and what person's doing what what they're um what they're supposed to do and he could just read it just just like that it, it scares me just just a tad bit so I don't see San Diego getting the win but Dallas at New Orleans Sunday night <clears throat> Excuse me. It's going to be a very, very good game. We got Dallas, good offense, just can't clutch it. And New Orleans, uh, having a top offense and a pretty solid defense, but has been lacking this, uh, this past few weeks. You know, their, their defense was like number four in the NFL and is now has just dropped down after a few games of giving up leads and, and stuff like that. Also, Seattle, uh, Seahawks will be on the road against the Atlanta Falcons. And what is going on with the Falcons? It is unbelievable what the Falcons are just struggling with. And now I kind of feel bad for Tony Gonzalez. I feel like now he probably should have got traded, whether it was Kansas City or somewhere else, uh, because Atlanta's not going to do anything this year. And it com it shocks me. It's like, what is wrong? This team was one game away from the Super Bowl, and now you're a few games away from being a top-10 draft pick. It's just it's incredible of how, if not a top-five pick, um, how they can just drop like that. Detroit at Chicago will be a good game. I'm uh, going to have high scoring there. Um, Philadelphia at Green Bay, backup quarter. Or, well, Nick Foles having seven touchdowns last week. That was incredible what that man did. Um, going against Green Bay's defense, which is e. It was nye, just a little bit okay, but Green Bay. This would have been a great time to have Aaron Rodgers not only playing, but also on your fantasy team because Philadelphia's defense is also one of the worst in pass defense. So you got a ton of yardage right there on uh, Philadelphia, but they will have Seneca Wallace or Matt Flynn playing. Uh, let's see what else. St. Louis at Indianapolis. That could be an intriguing game to watch to see how the defense does against the, what the Rams defense does against the Indianapolis Colts. And that looks Houston at Arizona. Uh, got uh, Case Keenum. I think this is Case Keenum's team. I don't know if I talked about this on Monday, but Case Keenum, I think he is the quarterback of the future for the Houston Texans. He, this guy, I'm so happy. I've seen him in college. I, you know, having what five years, six years that he played in college because of two medical red shirts and all this other stuff. But this guy threw for five thousand years, five thousand years, <laughs> five thousand yards in like two years, um, back to back years he did. And this guy is just incredible. And I really hope. He does become the starter for Houston, not only throughout the year, but throughout his career and, and does something for Houston because I think that would be a um, very good fit for him, especially, you know, being it was from the University of Houston, so that'd be cool. Uh, just the game, I just, just the game, just the thing that I just saw, um, Carolina Panthers at the San Francisco 49ers, that'll be a good game uh, with Carolina's defense being really untalked about and... Um, being a very, very physical defense against San Francisco. I feel like San Francisco is going to take them a little lightly. Um, and also to see how Cam Newton, he's been doing good the past few weeks. So everybody's like, oh, finally. It only took him, what, three or four years to finally be good. He's getting it done. See how he does against the San Francisco 49ers defense. 
Um, and a game that I missed, Cincinnati at Baltimore. Bengals, do not blow this game. You always struggle against teams that are very weak, and, and it just it surprises me. So, Dal- Dalton, I'm going to need you here, buddy. I'm going to need you because I really don't want to start. Uh, who's Brady playing? Is Brady off? Brady's off. So, yeah, I am playing you. So, I need you to do really good for me. Thank you. Um, and I look. Oh, and also, <laughs> the greatest Monday night game, part two. Miami at Tampa Bay, Monday night. It's going to be boring, 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 boring game to watch. So if you got something else to do Monday, you should go do it. Or watch basketball, NBA basketball. My Spurs, we're doing pretty good. We're 4 and 1 right now. Awesome, excited uh, for the season for the Spurs. I'm, I've now gotten over the, the finals of when the Spurs got robbed. Um, and I will stick by that story to the day I die. <sighs> in Miami Heat, I I dislike you every bit. So n- that'll be it for the show. We we still got around 30 minutes. We're at 26 minutes or so, so we were close enough. But uh, make sure you tune in next Monday. It is Veterans Day. We'll have a Veterans Day uh, special type thing. Um, next Monday, 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time. I, I know I said that it was going to be... Uh, this show is going to be 10 a.m., but uh, it is my dad's birthday, so I want to get this done quickly so then we can go do stuff. Um, but again, next Monday, 10 o'clock a.m., we'll recap what happened, uh, what, what's about to happen. But we need to talk, you know, as if it was Monday, so past tense type thing. We're going to recap the college football week, see who, what the BCS standing to say, which I am very, very ready to see what they say. And also, um, what's going on? Hopefully, you know, Peyton Manning doesn't throw for like 700 yards, seven touchdowns, no interceptions, and does all this stuff. So if you have Peyton Manning on your fantasy team, make sure you start him. I don't care what other quarterback. I don't care if they're going against Tampa Bay's defense or uh, Philadelphia's defense or whatever. Start Peyton Manning. I guarantee you this guy is going to have a career day. Hopefully not. But. I will see you guys next Monday, 10 a.m. Pacific time on Spreaker.com. If you like the show, make sure you follow on Spreaker.com. Help me get partnered with iHeartRadio because that would be awesome to make this my job. And also, if uh, you missed this episode or any other episodes, you can go on YouTube, type in The Short Sports Show. Make sure while you're there to like, subscribe, favorite, comment. If you have anything else to say, I have exclusive videos on YouTube uh, that are discussion videos that I want to hear what you guys have to say and that I will talk about in my show, um, you know, about Heisman talk, BCS standings, uh, what you guys predict, stuff like that. So make sure you go on YouTube, even if you already listened to the episode on Spreaker.com. And uh, that seems about it. I think I hit it. Hit it uh, blah, 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 blah. I think I hit everything on the note. Also, make sure on Facebook to like my page and the NFL News 24-7 uh, those guys, again, thank you guys. Awesome job. And, uh, seems about it. So again, thank you guys. Happy birthday to my dad. And, uh, I will see you guys next Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Really? I said thank you. Thank you guys. I will see you guys next Monday.